Hello again. In this video, I'm going to create an image for a pixel joint collaboration. Uh, it's an isometric collaboration and there's a few slots um, still available. So obviously I picked the 69th one because I'm a jerk. <laughs> and um, and so the goal here in this kind of collaborations is to create a piece that falls in with the rest of the pieces around it. The image is already absolutely epic. Every tile is a gold mine of knowledge and, and coolness. So I have to deal with that first. I have to make sure my tile doesn't really clash with um, anything, right? If I'm happy with a blank tile and then I go in. So right now I think most of the times I'm going into the tile set trying to find ideas that people have made so I don't uh, repeat any ideas. And I kind of figure that I want to do a tie interceptor. Uh, flying away from the Millennium Falcon. And uh, initially, I try to figure out if the scale is right, if the Millennium Falcon is a big ship, because I don't really have a reference for the scale. How big is it other than a TIE fighter, or in this case, an, a TIE interceptor? But I do want to do that. One of the people in the chat suggested maybe just have a fish poke out in the water, because I wanted to have elements in the water to gradually blend in from the river on the side over to my tile. And the, the fish poking out of the water is just ridiculous. It's like funny and ridiculous. So I just, I, I keep it, uh, <laughs> I keep it there for the longest time. So my initial idea is that, is to create the, uh, the tie interceptor. And I have to match the perspective of the Millennium Falcon, which let's basically admit it's isometric perspective. All these tiles are made of, of 45 degree angles. So here I'm looking for the scale, trying to figure out if, if it fits in that tile. So what I do is I start building a, a, a isometric grid just by creating isometric lines and building the isometric volumes. Now I'm pretty good um, with in, in terms of memory. I know what the uh, time interception looks like. So I'm comfortable in replicating that shape on the image. The trouble is it's not a very isometric friendly shape because there's a lot of panels that tilting inwards. So you might be able to see a panel from an, one angle, but then you won't be able to see it from another angle. Here I'm trying to figure out if I could just mirror the shape and I, I have this idea of just skewing it. And so what I do is I end up just flipping the uh, the object itself on, on a 3D space. and But then I start placing it on the image and it kind of doesn't really feel like it works, right? And then there's this the people from Star Trek just on the tile below, and they are the proper human scale on the scene. I mean, I think the Millennium Falcon is actually really, really small. And then I thought of doing maybe uh, Goku on his little cloud because the building on the bottom right of my tile kind of reminds me of buildings from Dragon Ball. So here's the little cloud, and I would have Goku on top just sitting there with, uh, I think at this time with a blue kimono. Uh, and maybe with a, with a stick on his back, but it blends too much with the ground. It either blends too much with the ground, but again, the scale is kind of off. And I'm, again, I'm panning on the web page looking for ideas, see if anyone has already done it. And then I think someone uh, in the chat also just suggests it. I'm not sure. So I go for Predator, right? I don't know if you guys seen the movie. Predator is very popular. Um, uh, I think it's late 80s, early 90s movie. And I actually just played a, a video game recently, uh, which features a, a side mission, which is the Predator is called The Jungle Moved in. I think it's uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. And it's actually a pretty cool design. So the trouble here is ba making that design with a limited palette because I don't have access to the army green colors that the original Predator had. I have uh, like black, there's a black there, there's a brown. Uh, and then there's blue and greens, but they're very vibrant. So I have to kind of settle for that. I have to go, okay, I'll just do blue because I'll assume that there's a lot of reflection from the sky color landing on the surfaces of the armor, right? And that's what I'm building. I build a, a silhouette and then I go in and highlight in blue the parts of the Predator which have armor. Now you can't see this, but on the other screen, of course, I have reference, photo reference of the Predator and I'm drawing based on that. The problem with isometric perspective is that if you put an object up on the image, it looks bigger because your brain is trying to solve the isometric perspective as a, a, a conical perspective, you know, as a, as a one point perspective or two point perspective or something. So if you move things too up on the image, the, the scale will be compromised. And I'm keeping the reference of the Star Trek characters, which are really close. I mean, I can't just go in and make the Predator a ridiculous size, especially when I have such a close reference on the tile 
next door, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to match the same scale. One of the features of the movie, I don't know if you remember, if you've seen it, uh, he would skin people, you know, because the predator is hunting for trophies. It's, it's like a rite of passage for their species, right? So they would come to a planet and, and sort of hunt people. And if they, were, they would hunt enough people, they would go back and, you know, and, and like move up socially in status. So part of the task here is to rebuild the Millennium Falcon on my tile. Right, because the, the the person who made it on their tile didn't really go over the, the tile. They didn't have to, of course. I mean it would have helped and I would have used I would have used their piece of artwork uh, overlapping my tile if if, uh, if it was available. I would have absolutely no problem. But it's also fun to just go in and actually uh, do it myself. So I'm using a lot of construction lines. You can see the red line is basically a construction line. So the hanging skinned bodies from the Millennium Falcon um, are just kind of an, uh, me adopting the shape as a hanging surfaces because it, it is floating. The, the Millennium Falcon is represented as floating. So it's okay for me to do that. So now I have that shadow on the ground. That shadow acts both as shadow for the bodies as well as for the Millennium Falcon. The problem here is should I extend that over to the next tiles? And I, I think I shouldn't. So I, I just make that shadow kind of disappear into the corner of my tile so that if anyone has to come in and, and do the next one, you can kind of argue that the the second tip on the bottom left of the Millennium Falcon, the shadow actually kind of falls off of the, of the land. I'm doing a lot of dithering transitions here because people around in the tiles around have used it and I'm kind of copying their style so that the transition is better. This is one of the reasons why doing these kind of uh, collaborations is great because you get to sort of pick other people's techniques and learn a few things from that, right? There was a, an empty spot behind the predator and I decided to have like jungle uh, leaves uh, plant, like a, a big plant with big leaves, typical of tropical jungles, um, just as a backdrop. It kind of creates a little bit of a noise uh, situation there, but I think I'm moving it a little bit and also add a few other plants. As a plant, I base off of the movie Predators with uh, Adrian Brody, I think. And there's a plant there that is very um, poisonous and it has this kind of reddish tint. And I think I kind of, it wasn't really based because I didn't look for the reference of it. So I kind of just guessed, but it, it is paying homage to that. And if you notice, I've moved the fish up because I didn't really want to lose the fish. I'm also adding vines to the Millennium Falcon because at this point I've kind of settled on the idea that it is stranded and has been abandoned. And that's why the predator could hang the bodies there with absolutely no one annoying him or just going, hey, listen, what are you doing? This is our, this is our ship. Um, there's also the issue of making the shadow transition from the grass to the dirt. Oh, there's the flower that I mentioned. Uh, the, the transition of the, of the shadows from grass to dirt as well to kind of uh, solidify the concept of ground and what is shadow, what is just a ground color. And as you can see, those purple stripes on, on the neighboring tile, I kind of extended those into my tile as well to, to give it a continuous look. The predator, if you remember, would hunt for skulls and spines, so that's why he's holding one. And uh, what you saw me do a little bit earlier with having the colors all weird was me testing out by doing negative colors, see if there was any color on layers that I didn't paint over. and. This is basically the final result. I'm doing some finer adjustments, but this is the final result. And I think it came up cool. Uh, so I hope you guys liked it and I hope you learned something from it. And uh, I'll see you guys some other time. Take care.